and welcome along to Diecast Restos for another Diecast Restoration. I'm Jason and today it's the Lesney Matchbox Major Pack M2A Bedford Articulated Walls Ice Cream Lorry up for renewal. And breathe. These were made between 1957 and 1961. The cabs were pale blue as seen on the underside of my repainted Bedford while the trailers were off-white to cream with a black base plate. It was the first Matchbox model to feature decals, initially solvent and later water slides. Here is a mint example. And this is a Bedford S-Type tractor towing a trailer. The M2A was the fourth Bedford S-Type based casting produced by Lesney. In the 1-75 range, the 27A low loader, 28A compressor truck and 40A tipper all preceded it. The S-Type was built by Bedford, the commercial arm of Vauxhall and subsidiary of General Motors between 1950 and 1959. It launched at the commercial vehicle show of 1950 and quickly earned the nickname Big Bedford. Its maximum gross weight was 7100 kilos or 7.8 US tons. The S-Type was equipped with a 4.92 litre six-cylinder Bedford petrol engine on launch, which produced 110 horsepower. It was driven by a four-speed manual gearbox. In 1953, an optional Perkins R6 5.56 litre, 108 horsepower diesel engine became an option. Leyland's O350 5.76 litre diesel and Bedford's own diesel engine were options from 1957. Related to the S-Type was the SB bus, a die cast I have restored in the 21A and B Bedford Duple Luxury Coach double header. The RL, a military conversion for the S-Type, was built from 1953 until the early 70s. This varied from the regular truck with its larger wheels for increased ground clearance and its offer of all-wheel drive. These were all powered by Bedford's petrol engine. The famed Green Goddess fire appliance was based on the RL. The Bedford TK was the S-Type's replacement in 1960, another I have restored in die-cast form in the 3B 7.5 tonne tipper video. Rather aptly, the M2A S-Type was replaced by a Bedford TK with the M2B articulated freight truck. The S-Type cab received silver trim to its grille, bumper and headlights though the bumper was quickly omitted. Wheels were grey metal to start with. You may have noticed the trailers were metal, while my cab had grey plastic, meaning this is a bit of a mongrel. I have a plan on how to resolve this, but I'm not sure how I feel about it. Initially, axle ends were crimps like these, but later issues had rounded ends. I've entrusted high coat paints yet again on this casting, Somewhat inappropriately, I have used Ford colours, Olympic blue and ivory white, on a GM product. Some might call this sacrilege. Some of the cab's plastic wheels had picked up a bit of the red and green paint that was coating the body. A quick bathe in Dettol will sort this out. Here are the metal wheels from the trailer with the M2 designation cast into them. I happen to have some spare grey plastic ones going, and while I usually try my absolute best to reuse original parts, it seemed only right with this one to have matching wheels, front and back, tractor and trailer. Let me know in the comments if you agree with my decision. Either way, undoing my actions would be no big deal. It's markedly easier to flatten the crimped axles to replace wheels than those with rounded ends. Now though, I give my cab the full Lesney trim treatment which included the full grille, headlights and entire wraparound bumper. That is then coated in clear. Next, it's time to apply the Wool's Ice Cream decals, obtained from Steve Flowers Model Supplies. Wool's were founded in 1786 by butcher Richard Wool, best known for their sausages. 
With the company's sales falling each summer, Thomas Wall II conceived the idea to start selling ice creams. This eventually began in 1922 after the firm was taken over by Lever Brothers and Margarine Uni, later Unilever. Wall's is part of the Hart brand of ice creams, sold as Good Humor in the US and various different names across Europe. The original Meats brand of Wool's was sold in 1994, while Unilever retained the ice cream side of the business. Brief history lesson over, I now seal over these exceptional decals with Mr. Mark Softer. I will leave links to model supplies in the description. But we're getting close to the end now with the last of the solution rolled out. All that is needed is the axles to be refitted onto the cab, ends crimped, and then the final touch of molotochrome on the ends of those axles. Here's my M2A before I remodelled it. This mismatched pair had very different stories to tell. The cab had been attacked with red and green paint, some of which had landed on the wheels. The trailer had fared much better, but the paint had yellowed significantly. It had a few scratches, a rusty axle, and decals that were barely distinguishable. It was all looking rather sour, but let's see it after some sweet treatment. Back in colours, better resembling the original model, it's now looking really ice, I mean nice. The cab has been given the full trim treatment and was coated in a shade of pale blue that really complements the trailer cream. That has also been given a superb set of decals, which really sets the whole thing off. I decided to swap the metal wheels of the trailer to a set of grey plastic ones in order to match those of the cab. Then the crimped axle ends have been touched with chrome to seal the deal. So tell me what you think about this restoration. I think it's one of my cleanest ever. It's a transformation I'm very proud of. Please drop the video a like to really aid its visibility. It'd also mean a lot if you could subscribe if you haven't already. Please support on Patreon if you at all can. My thanks go to those who already do. But all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.